Hello, I'm Jerry Johnson at the Community House in Shandon, Ohio. Behind me is the Paddy's Run Old Welsh Cemetery. I am bringing you the story of the Paddy's Run Valley and the village that became Shandon, Ohio. I hope you enjoy the presentation. Today I'm with John David Francis in the Paddy's Run Old Welsh Cemetery outside the community house. And John David is uh, the fifth generation of David and Mary Francis. And we're standing by their headstones. And John David, would you tell us some of the adventures and problems these young people had in coming to this country? Well, Jerry, they, uh, they, they, uh, Welsh and the English never did get along, and uh, they had uh, taxation, they had uh, religious uh, freedom, and they didn't have religious freedom, so they wanted to come to America, and there was a group of Welsh young men and young ladies wanting to get here, and to do that, they needed to sail for about eight weeks over to the port of Philadelphia. So, the girls decided they were going to take the luggage and uh, try to g get away from the press gang that was uh, prevalent in those days. And the boys were going to do, uh, separate and go by way of uh, the, their uh, walk, in other words, to walk the 60 miles to Br uh, Bristol, England. From Wales to from Bristol. From Wales to Bristol, and then they were going to board a ship uh, I believe the Maria, and they were going to go to Philadelphia. Yep. The only problem was uh, the captain and the crew, they, they had their eye on the pretty Welsh girls. And when they got to the port of Philadelphia, the girls needed to escape by sliding down the rope onto the dock. So they had quite a time, and uh, uh, but they finally uh, got to Cincinnati, the, uh, the Francis group got to Cincinnati, got up to um, Patty's Run, and uh, this is uh, really the, the travel of David and Mary Roland Francis. There you go. Thank you, John. That was a delightful story, and I'm sure everybody will appreciate it.
Jerry Johnson again, strolled with me through Shandon while we listened to a tale from Bill Crane, a longtime resident of Shandon, Ohio. And his tales are about the early part of the 20th century. These were recorded by John David Francis a couple of decades ago. One time it was a real cold morning and, and John Sefton came up to Georgia's shop. Bree Sefton and I was there and, and it was getting a long time to get the mail and, and that model that he his wouldn't run. Well, we went down, we did the usual thing. We, we put a whack under one axle and, and uh, put in high gear, you know, so that they had an oil clutch, you know, it was an awful drag. And we cranked it, it wouldn't start. Well, there was a little ice in the distributor, well, or not it wasn't the distributor, timer at that time, and cleaned that out, still wasn't it. So it must have been ice in the, in the carburetor. Well, the usual thing was to take the plug out, check, see if it got didn't run, must have been ice. So we did that, and it didn't run. So then you'd soak a corn cob in uh, coal oil and put it under the uh, carburetor until you thawed the ice out and then put the plug back in. Well, in the process, somebody forgot to put the plug back in. And so when it did throw it out, well, here comes the gasoline and it caught on fire and back up through. And, and you couldn't get the plug in because of the fire, and it was rough. And, and uh, we tried to push it out and forgot about the wagon jack. And, and uh, so Lizzie said, I'll go get the, I'll go get the fire distinguisher. I'll go get the fire distinguisher. Well, it got me laughing that I couldn't push it. Anyway, we got the car out and saved the garage.
Let's see, what else we got? Well, let me see, we have to start picking on somebody else? Yes. I guess the next victim would be uh, old Bill Williamson. We call him Wire. Uh, one time Red Lewis got me to help me paint the store and we had a scaffold and we had to paint the side of the store and uh, old Bill come across the street. He lived over there where uh, Don DeMere's mother lived in. And he'd see us and they said, uh, when are you boys going to use some of that striping paint? And they chuckle, you know, and go on in the store. <laughs> About the fifth time he said it, Red kept getting more red under the collar. And he, he said, he said, if he says anything more about striping paint, look for the damn bucket of paint right down in the neck. In the back of uh, John Schrader's store was always a barber shop. Oh, Oscar Proctor, Ben and any number of guys. Uh, anyway, this fellow by the name of Jack Casey blew in town. I'm uh, a pretty good barber. Either drunk or sober, he's a good barber. And uh, we think he's good barber or sober, but no barber saw him that way. Anyway, he never had a bay rum because he drank it all. John Trayden never had any vanilla extract or lemon extract, but Jack drank it all. But anyway, he barbering away, and I've seen him shaving Lori Morehouse, standing on his heels, hanging on to Lori's nose to keep him falling down, and never cut the man. And Lori swore to me, declared he was the best hair uh, shave he ever had. And Deacon Law said the same thing. He said, I never cut him, never hurt him.